In the last section, we saw that our basic Express app was working. In this section, we will hook up our working Express server with our React frontend through a proxy. And this may sound complicated, but it's actually very, very easy. So let's go in our client directory, which holds our create React app. And inside our React app, let's go to the package.json file. And here we actually just need one line of code, proxy in quotes, and then colon, and then our localhost 5000. And remember, localhost 5000 is a port that we're running our express server in. And that's it. That's literally all we have to do to connect our React frontend to our express server. And to test to see if our React frontend is in fact connected to our express server, we can send some data from our express server back to the React frontend. And we'll do this in a file called routes.js. So essentially how it will work is when a user visits a certain route on a React frontend, it's going to call our Express server, which will send some data. And you might be asking, well, how would React know that it's a route for the Express server and not just a route for React Router? We'll go over how React would know the difference in a later section, but for now, let's just go ahead and just set up the route anyway. So in our routes.js file, and remember this file is in the server directory under the main folder. So in this file, let's first start with express and then do equals require express. Next, we can do var router equals express dot router. And dot router is a given function from express. It's, we didn't have to set it up. And this router function, or more specifically, the result of this router function, which is saved in var router, is what allows us to make HTTP requests, as we will see in a second. So let's set up our first HTTP, HTTP request. So let's do router.get and slash hello. And again, slash hello is the first argument in this function. And, and as you can see, it is a relative path. We don't have to do the whole local host 3000 slash hello. And then our second argument is actually a function that takes rec and res as their arguments. And rec just means request, is just short for request, and res is just short for response from the server. And then inside of our code block, we can do res.json and then pass in a string of hello world. So this is essentially what this is saying is response.json. So convert the server response to JSON of the string hello world. And again, obviously this is simulated. We're not actually getting this string from a server. And also note that res is not a reserved keyword or anything. res is just the second argument in our anonymous function. And at the bottom, we can just do module.exports and then router. And then back in our app.js file, and remember this is app.js in the server directory, we can now import this routes file that we just created. And we can save it in a var called index router. So just do var index router require and then dot slash routes. And it's dot slash because routes is in the same directory as app.js. And then to use this router, we do app.use and then slash, because that's the default path. And then the second argument, just pass in index router. And now that we're done setting up our app.js in our server directory of our express app, we can go to the React app and then set up app.js there. So again, this is app.js in client slash source, which is our React project. So we'll first start off by delay, deleting all the boilerplate default code. And here we're going to try to get our hello world data from our ser express server. So we need somewhere to save our hello world response. So let's create a property of state called hello and set it to null. And then in our render method, between our two divs, we can do a ternary expression and then the condition of this.state.hello. And if this.state.hello is true, we can do div and then display the actual this.state.hello, which if our server is working, should be the string of hello world. And if false, we can just do null. And then we actually have to do an API request to actually get the data from our express server. And we'll use the Axios library to actually make the request. So go ahead and install and import it here if you have not already done so. So inside of our component did mount method, we can do axios.get. And if 
if you need a refresher on React or if you're unfamiliar, component did mount is just a function that's a lifecycle method that automatically gets called when the component renders. So it's if you're familiar with Angular 2, it's the ng on init function. It's similar to that. And then for the path, let's do axios.get slash hello. And remember, slash hello will match the path, the route that we set up in our Express server. And then we do a dot dot then, and then we do res, which is just short for response, arrow function, this dot set state, and then we pass in hello, and then res dot data. So the entire res object that we'll get from Express will hold a lot of data that we don't need to use. So to access just the hello world string, we do res dot data. And again, dot data is set automatically by the Express server. We didn't set it up when we were setting up routes. And if you're unfamiliar with the dot then call, all it's saying is wait for axis dot get to finish. And if there is a value, then do this. And Axios is promise based, so it, it opens a subscription and waits for data to come in from the Express server. And you have to understand that Axios is promise based, which is why we can change the dot then call to it. And if you're not sure, promises are just a data type used for making Ajax calls. So if the promise resolves, which means the date the server sends back data, then we do the dot dot then call. If not, we do the dot catch error call. And this is really it. This is all we have to do to set up our API call to our Express server. So we can now begin going ahead and testing our app. And I should say we're testing our apps because we'll run both the Express server and React frontend separately. So open two different terminal windows in each of the directories. So one terminal window in the client directory and one in the server directory. And in the terminal for the server directory, just run npm run dev start. And in the terminal for the client directory, just use npm start. So now we have both our server and React app running at the same time. So if we go in our browser, let's go to localhost 3000 where our React app is running. And we want to go to our React app since this is the view and contains what we will see in the UI. And yep, if we go to our server, we do see Hello World right there on the screen. And we can be 100% sure that this is coming from our Express server backend because, well, let's go back to our editor. If we look in our app.js file in our React app, we do not have the string Hello World anywhere here. We have Hello, but we don't have Hello World anywhere here. So the only place it can be coming from is our Express server.